What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louie's Coach Review, back again with a little tutorial. And today I'm here to answer the question of people out there that have just basically been hitting me up. Um, one of my videos, the Serpent Mini by Watofo, this device, the one with the denim on the box, a lot of people saying it's the serpent in the denim or some shit like that, you know, nobody understands why there's denim on this box. But anyway, all in all, um, here to answer the call to the masses. The masses have asked me over and over again, dude, can you throw a Fuse Clapton in there? Dude, can you show the wicking tutorial better or easier? Because I get nothing but dry hits. That's all people tell me. I get nothing but dry hits with this device. This is a great fucking single coil tank. It's a great, it's a phenomenal tank for that matter. So I went out, I bought a new one, okay? I bought a new one from Watofo, and um, this is the stainless steel, and I wanted to do a build tutorial on this one. Now, I couldn't find the original one, so I ended up getting the 25 millimeter one, because that's basically what's out in the market. I couldn't find anything for the older version, which I think the older version was less than, I think it was like 22 millimeter on the old one. So I got the 25 millimeter one. So I just want to show a build tutorial on the 25 millimeter, how I wick it, and throwing a fuse clap in an air and so forth and so forth. Uh, if you have the older version, you know, I hopefully, I, I don't know you, I don't even know what the building deck looks like. I walked in the store, I was like, yo, you got a Serpent Mini? He sold me a Serpent Mini. Then when I got home, I was like, oh shit, it's a 25 millimeter one. So let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna open it up. This is gonna be my first impression of it, basically. If it's different, then all right, it's different, but I'll just show you how I wick it anyway and go from there. So let's open this bad boy up. All right, so same as the other one, you slide out and you got the little instruction booklet, little free t-shirt giveaway thing. Okay, now this has, I think it's gonna be a different build building deck, but this comes from what I see here, it has a velocity style two post deck. Okay. Um, I'm hoping it still has the original deck because I loved the original deck on this one. Yes, it does have the original deck. So that's good to see. All right. So let's go up close. Let me do the build and I'll show you how I wick this thing properly. Okay. All right. Let's do that. So what we got here is we got a five wrap, 24 gauge stainless steel fused clapton with 34 gauge stainless steel wrapping it okay we got it uh about five wraps i believe yes that is five wraps on a three millimeter driver i'm just basically going to tuck my leads down in here into the uh the areas that they need to be now what some people have suggested you know to avoid the leads rubbing to the inner wall barrel. Uh, some people said, you know, pre-cut this. Well, yeah, I could pre-cut this, basically. I could just simply bend the leg back to where I want to cut it. And when I remove this, then I could see where I need to snip the wire. So I remove the wire, and it shows me the bends in the wire. And that is where I would need to cut the coil legs to get them in there so none of the legs will be sticking out of the channel. So I cut my wire legs and I put a little slight bend going inward towards the coil because the posts on this deck are pretty close together. They're, they're not that wide, so it's not really calling. The deck isn't really calling for this kind of build being this wide, okay? This building deck is actually calling for uh, a smaller diameter coil and a smaller diameter build. But I like to push the limits on everything I do. So let's see how well this big build will fit in here.
We're rocking a 0.17 ohm build. The way I, f I get my fused Clapton's glowing, especially with stainless steel, you can see right there, that's the hot area where it turned blue. And I like to pulse these very, very slowly so I can get an even glow out of them. So I'll just sit there and I'll just pulse some very small, very light pulses. Eventually the whole coil will, glee, uh, will glow evenly. And as you can see, once you pulse it very slowly, you're going to start changing the stainless steel to different colors. It's going to go from blue to red to orange to gray. I think that's good enough for now. For Japanese cotton, I usually grab this much cotton for a three millimeter coil build. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pinch the square with that much cotton right there available. And I'll grab and pull apart and go straight down. Now most Japanese cottons, they have a tough layer up top. This one doesn't seem to have it. But I'm going to peel back a layer anyway. I'm going to try and peel back the thinnest layer possible. Because I want to get the most wicking possible cotton I need. I need the fluffiest, most wickingest cotton available. Now I'm just basically going to pat the cotton down a little bit, just kind of like squeeze it between my fingers, kind of roll it in your fingers, and then I'm going to twist one end to be tight. I'll do a super tight roll on one end. Now we have the tight end of our cotton right here, and what I like to do is I just want to demonstrate to you that the cotton on this end is a lot fatter and I want it to fit in the coil nice and snug, but I don't want it so tight where it's going to move my coil over. I just want it to be in there nice and snug and you can see all the different, you know, hairs of the cotton basically. So you can see this is going to wick really nicely. When you see all these tiny little hairs visible, then you know it's going to wick nicely. And when I pull my cotton through, you can see on this end it's tighter the cotton and on this end it's aired out. But I'm still able to pull the cotton through. It's just nice and has a little snugness to it. It's not impossible to get it through, but it does move kind of nicely. You can see that. So this is how I like my cotton to be. You can see it's spacious on this side and it's spacious on this side. On both sides it is pretty spacious. Then I like to pull the cotton downward to see where it's going to end up. So where I need to cut, I basically know I'm going to use the outer rim, this right here with the threads. I'm going to use this as a judgment right here to where, where to cut my cotton. Because it's pretty much level with the ledge on the inside of the building deck. Now what I like to do here at this point, uh, once the cotton is trimmed, we have to wet it. Now, naturally, when you wet cotton, it starts to thin itself out, basically. So, I just want to apply some liquid to the coil first. And it doesn't matter if it's going to go into my airflow hole on this thing. I don't care if it drips out the airflow at this point. I just want to get my cotton nice and saturated. So, I'm going to apply some e-liquid through my unicorn bottle. And then place my cotton down on the ledge. As I'm placing, I'm, I'm dripping liquid at the same time. 
is I'm just positioning my cotton where I want it to be. And you can see the difference in the cotton from here that this is fully wicked versus this side which is dry. So now I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver and pack my cotton into the wedge. It's easier to move now that the cotton is wet. And that's all I need. That's all you got to do. It's cut right to the point where it's sitting on that ledge in there. It's sitting on that ledge in there nicely. And there's a good amount over here as well. Now that's what I call a beautifully wicked RTA. This will wick perfectly every single time I use it. I will never get a dry hit out of this. It will always get juice down in this channel here because down here the cotton is not packed in tightly. It's just basically resting in there. And it's just a it's just common sense that when juice is sitting down here and heat is applied to the coil, the heat will literally pull that liquid up through the wick and make its way to the coil. Literally, the juice will jump from the tank into this little crevice right here, through the cotton, and into the wick, and into the coil. And with these fuse claptons, you could just see how the liquid just collects inside those wraps of the fuse clapton, basically. Now this is a top fill tank, so you're just basically going to take your e-liquid and drip it through the top and fill up the reservoir. What's nice about the 25 millimeter that I'm seeing that this one has that the other one doesn't is obviously this has a bigger tank, so you could hold more e-liquid. So it is the Serpent Mini, but this is the 25 millimeter one. Whoa, this thing is pretty fucking good. It's wicking really, really nicely on this. The 25 millimeter is a nice version of the, I'm sorry, the 25 millimeter. I don't know if I said 24, but the 25 millimeter uh, Serpent Mini, this is, wow. Flavor is just incredible. A two wire, 24 gauge stainless steel wrapped in 34 gauge stainless steel wrapped five times around a three millimeter driver and we're ohming out at 0.18 ohms i got it sitting on my v god um my v god regulated box unfortunately this box does not use temp control stainless steel it doesn't recognize stainless steel and temp control but i'm rocking at 75 watts and it's a hot build And no dry hits. So I'm going to sit back, relax, put this on fast forward, and you can see me in live time that I don't get a dry hit. Mm. 75 watts is a little hot. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to 65 watts. So currently I'm at 65. So you can see this as proof. 
65 watts at 0.19 ohms. My battery's a little low, but no big deal. Still a little too hot at 65 watts. So I'm gonna bring it down even more. I'm gonna bring it down to 50 watts. Now we're at 50 watts. So maybe this will be not so hot because stainless steel, all stainless steel, the being the build, being you know the core wires and the fused wire, is it's, it's a little hot. Much better. I'm going to tighten up the airflow. I'm going to do a tiny hole on the airflow because I like this for flavor chasing. I'm not looking for the biggest clouds. I'm looking for the biggest flavor. And you still get nice, dense clouds, folks. Flavor is unbelievable. I'm getting a little nicked out. Still getting huge clouds. Still, even with a tight airflow on here. And I got plenty of juice in the tank to support the uh, the build that I got in here. And I can see little air bubbles rising from uh, at the bottom of the tank. So that means the cotton is actually wicking and there's no dry hits. All right, I'm getting nicked out. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm getting nicked out. I have no problem with this, you know. And as far as people saying, dude, I got a dry hit, I got a dry hit. Well, maybe those guys dry hitting are dry. They're getting dry hits from really high wattages. Maybe lower your wattage or wick it correctly. That's all I can really tell you, really. Because if you don't wick these things correctly, they're not going to fire correctly. They're not going to work for you correctly, okay? You have to remember when it's wicking, it's going against gravity, okay we're using a vacuum effect but we're not able to change the direction of gravity gravity pulls everything down so the juice in this tank it will be pulled down but in order for it to travel up those wicks and into the coil it has to climb a mountain basically so you can't sit there vaping this tank at 200 watts that's not what you want to buy this tank for that's not what it's meant for you want to go with a, a lower wattage cook the coils and the heat will draw the liquid through the cotton up to the coil but it's not going to do it if you're going to be ramping up the coil at 150 watts or more it's not going to do it because it's not that simple because the 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 liquid still has to travel up the cotton and make its way into the coil whereas some devices you know where the liquid goes into the reservoir it doesn't have to go so high up to get to the coil some of them just go into the reservoir and straight to the coil those devices you can vape at 150 to 200 watts because the liquid doesn't really have that much to travel in a tank like this it still has to go against gravity and go up through a slight vacuum process which you can't ramp the coil up because what's going to happen is the coil is going to get so hot the liquid's not going to travel up to your coil as fast so the cotton that's in your uh that's right under your or, or inside of your coil that's going to dry up and that's going to give you a dry hit because the liquid doesn't have enough time to make its way up and go into the coil you know as you saw on this build you know the cotton drapes out goes down and then goes into those channels the liquid still has to go through the tank into those holes in the channels then make its way up the cotton and up to your coil so it's going like this basically you know it's it needs a little time to get there you can't speed up the process and you don't need 200 watts to enjoy this you can see I'm vaping at 50 watts and I'm really enjoying it I can actually even bring it down lower I can go down to let's say 35 watts let's let's just vape this at 35 watts okay and you'll see here I'm at 35 watts and this is registering a 0.17 ohm The flavor is incredible. It's perfect. 35 watts. It's perfect. You know, this is vaping at 2.76 volts. 
at 35 watts and the ohmage is registering a 0 0.18, 0 0.19. And it's still chucking clouds. And I don't even have the airflow all the way open. I'm going to open the airflow all the way. Bigger clouds, less flavor with it opened all the way. So we're going to tighten up the airflow again. Just make it as tight as possible. And you're going to get awesome flavor out of this tank. The clouds, way denser. Not as big, but denser. But the flavor is just incredible. And it's 25 mil tank. I mean, it's lasting. I mean, you can see the level of this tank. It, it, it hardly even dropped. So juice capacity is great on this tank. Um, if anybody's interested in picking up the Serpent Mini, the original Serpent Mini was a great tank, but unfortunately the tank was small, so you weren't able to put a lot of liquid in there. This one I see being an all day great vaping tank. Plenty of room in there for juice. Uh, the building deck is still small, but I don't mind that. Uh, the only negative about the tank this tank and the other tank as well the only negative that i could find is the fact that the allen grub screws have a tendency to strip especially with these big coil legs um you guys may not have seen it because i probably edited it out but i stripped one of the allen grub screws installing the coil so i just grabbed another screw from the packet that comes with the with the box and i just put a new screw in okay but it's very easy to strip these screws, especially with these huge coil legs. So just be careful, you know, just try to keep your Allen key as straight as possible when you're tightening it. And when you feel like it's nice and snug, not Superman tight, because as soon as you go to Superman tightness, you're going to strip it. It's going to go dink, and you're going to hear it strip. And then it's not going to back out. Then it's going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to sit there fiddling it with it forever. So just be careful with your Allen grub screws. They don't give you the strongest grub screws in the world, okay? They don't give you black steel. They give you some cheap shit Allen grub screw made of, I don't know, galvanized metal or some shit. Something like soft and weak, you know? So just be careful with your screws, and that's about it. If you want to get the best possible flavor, this tank is great for flavor. Just do a really tight airflow, do a single coil. And you don't have to super sub ohm it. I'm at 0 0.18, 0 0.17, or 0 0.19, or 0.20, depending which device I screw this tank on. And it's vaping great. I'm at 35 watts. Like, since when do I ever vape at 35 watts? Never. But with this tank, really enjoying it. And like the previous video, I was using a crispy cap. This is a Delrin cap. It's a press fitted cap that fits into the 510. Crispy cap makes these Delrin caps. They shape them. They're really nice. They're wide bore. Even though it's a 510, it's a wide bore. And you can see it's tapered as it goes down into the 510 area. So it's wide up top and it tapers its way down, which is nice because it gives you a nice fit and feel for your mouth. And when you're inhaling, you get a nice vape out of it. It's, it doesn't feel like a very tight draw. And a lot of people ask me, where do you get these caps? Well, here's the web address right here. Go to crispycaps.com. Pick up a packet of these 510 crispy cap drip tips. They're, they're really nice. You know, they fit and feel great on the mouth. And they don't get hot, which is nice about them. So check them out. All right. So for me to YouTube, peace out. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you guys got something out of it. And that's all I can tell you. For me to you, peace. Laters.